the property on the retail side. And then Josh, you'll maybe uh, show a little bit about what you do as well. Yep. So we'll use um, the property that we were, the case study that we were talking about, uh, the property in Bel Air. So 1706 Magnum. All right, so guys, what I always do is I always start with the subject property. Find that in the public record section of the MLS. Pull that up and kind of have that as a base that we're working off of here. There she is. And in this case, it pulls up the past listings. Let's say that wasn't listed in the past. You're going to come up with this, just general public records, owner information, tax, when it was built, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, what we're looking for is this, the above grade square footage here, because that's obviously going to be a big factor in the home's value. Um, so we pull this up here. Well, then what I do is I duplicate my screen or the tab. So I have this as standard because MLS is funky and doesn't like too many tabs open. So, and I, I do also typically like to have two screens. So this will be on one screen, and, and I'm, then I'm going back to MLS here and pulling up our comp. So copy your address, and we're searching. Couple things we're looking for. We're looking at coming soon, actives, active under contract, anything that's pending, and close. I typically like to stay 180 days, no more than six months ago, because um, I'm thinking of how an, a bank appraiser is going to look. They're only going to go back six months. So I typically like to stay at 180 days, unless it's a really unique property and I got to go back further. I always start here. All right, so then obviously the type of property, single family homes, we're only looking at single family homes, so I just like detached. Um, and I leave everything else pretty much open until we look at what our options are. So then I go to the map, type in my address that I copied earlier, that pulls up our subject, zoom out, get rid of the satellite view, it's a little bit easier to look at this way. And then, all right, so I'm going to be looking for, again, on the retail side, I want to say in the same neighborhood, obviously, um, not crossing any major boundaries or roads for this, in this case, Route 22 right there, and uh, Fountain Green off to the, the left side here. So I'm going to be focusing on this, in this same particular neighborhood right there. And I use the particular polygon tool, but everybody likes to use something different. So I'm just sort of circle that area. Go to results, just to narrow. I like to sort, sort by list price, and then I sort by status. So you can see actives at the top, close at the bottom. And then we'll go back to our subject. So make sure we're looking at four bedrooms versus five bedrooms, making sure that it matches our subject property. Uh, square footage, I typically go, and then I'll also look at square footage. And that's another thing you can sort by. Going back to your criteria, you can enter your square footage range. So I typically go like plus three, minus 300. So up, up 300, minus 300 to look at comparable values there. So back to our results. And... All right, what we talked about earlier in our market, uh, going back into our data. So we got to look at in this crazy market that we're in, 2021, going back into 2020 is going to be a different price point and uh, different value on the homes there. So make sure you take that into consideration. But we're really looking for similar size, similar bedrooms, similar bathrooms, similar square footage. So something that is uh, a thousand square foot more is not going to be a true, true comp there. So make sure you take that into consideration. Um, as you can see, there weren't that many comps at the uh, subject sale price that we were talking about at 437, which is why we were all shocked at what it sold for. 437.10 just closed uh, about two weeks ago. You can see all of our close prices were high threes. Uh, the fours were properties that were. Either not comparable, so this was comparable, but fixed up, updated kitchens, updated bathrooms, things like that, which our subject property was original to uh, 1998 when it was built. So we had to take that into consideration. So that's how pretty much we comp, prop, comp properties. Uh, the real quick version of it, um, 
And again, we're looking at similar size, similar square footage, plus or, plus or minus about 300 square foot, maybe a little bit more. Make sure we're looking at the same number of bedrooms, maybe, maybe one less, maybe one more, but you adjust your price accordingly. And the biggest thing is location, not crossing any major boundaries, roads. Uh, make sure you're obviously staying as close as you can in the same neighborhood. Oh, and one last thing, style of the house. Um, a two-story colonial is not going to comp like a, a rancher would, uh, and take that into consideration. Typically split levels and ranchers are going to be considered uh, the same in the eyes of a, of a bank appraiser. Uh, that's how I always think. And then your two stories are going to be two stories, um, for instance, there. So that's how typically we comp on a, the retail real estate side.